Selena, Queen of Tejano Music, a literally cultured read aloud, written by Silvia Lopez, illustrated by Paula Escobar. Lake Jackson, Texas, 1977. The music coming through the window caught six-year-old Selena Quintanilla's attention. She bounded indoors and raced through the kitchen, startling her mother, Marcella. What are you doing, Celine? Marcella asked. To sing with them, mommy, replied Selena. They sound good. In the living room, big brother A.B. strummed a guitar while nine-year-old Suzette beat rhythm on the drums. Their father, Abraham, had spent weeks teaching his older children to play their instruments. It hadn't always gone well. The kids often complained about practicing. They'd rather be out in the bright Texas sunshine. But that day, they were hitting all the right notes of Blue Moon, a tune Selena knew. Using a hairbrush as a pretend microphone, Selena burst into song. She had been singing almost since she could talk. Abraham, a musician himself in his younger days, listened more closely. His little girl had perfect pitch. And as Selena twirled and danced in step with the music, something else became clear. Selena was a performer. The Quintanillas. Years earlier, on Easter Sunday, April 16, 1971, Marcella and Abraham Quintanilla had thought their third child would be a boy. A mom-to-be sharing the hospital room had picked a lovely name for her own baby, certain it was a girl. In a twist of fate, that mom had a boy. At a loss for girl names, Marcella borrowed the other mom's original choice, Selena, which means moon goddess. With a growing family, Abraham put away his music dreams and took a job with a chemical company in Lake Jackson, Texas. It was a good place to live. People of different ethnic groups got along well. Some were Hispanics or Latinos, mostly Mexican-American Tejanos, like the Quintanillas. Neighbors remembered the Quintanilla children as happy and respectful. Selena seemed to have something magical she had a smile bigger than life and a voice to match. Selena sang at family gatherings. She sang while walking to and from school. She sang to her classmates at recess. Selena was a good student who could go far, said one teacher. She could win a college scholarship. A family band. Music was always important to the Quintanillas. By 1980, they had formed a small band called Southern Pearl. The children practiced every day on secondhand equipment in the garage. The walls were lined with carpet pieces so rehearsals wouldn't bother the neighbors. My children are all talented, Abraham said proudly, and Selena has stage presence. He arranged the music and booked performances at parties and country fairs. Everybody helped. My mom painted empty coffee cans black to make spotlights, Selena said. In 1980, Abraham quit his job to open a Mexican-style restaurant called Papagoyos. The band performed there most weekends. Imitating her favorite American pop artists, nine-year-old Selena's clear, strong voice soared over the clatter of dishes. Then, in the early 1980s, the Quintanilla's life took a turn. Corpus Christi, Texas, 1983. Times were tough in America. Jobs were hard to come by. People had less money to eat in restaurants. Papagoyos closed. The small house in Lake Jackson, including the furniture, was sold to pay bills. The family moved to Corpus Christi, Texas. They rented a house in the Molino Barrio, a middle-class neighborhood where many Tejanos lived. For Selena, everything changed, except making music. But now it became a way for her family to earn a living. We had no other alternative to make money, Selena said. With her as the main attraction, the band took the name Selena y los Dinos, 
Selena and the boys. Selena tried to look older than her 12 years. She wore makeup and flashy homemade clothes, but only on stage. At home, she was just like any other kid, although maybe more sheltered than most because Abraham was very strict. In any case, there was little time for socializing since Selena was often busy rehearsing or performing. Touring the countryside. Most gigs or bookings took place on weekends. Everyone from extra musicians to the family dog traveled in an old van together. Every time we turned, I rolled off the seat, Selena said laughing. Money was still tight for the Quintanillas. The family traveled from town to town, either sleeping in their van or at inexpensive motels. The money earned went to buy food from roadside stands. You have to take what you can get when you're getting started, Selena said. We ate lots of hamburgers and shared everything. If only a handful of people came to watch, the band still played their best. Those people had paid and they deserved a good show. The language challenge. On the road, Abraham noticed that many people asked for Tejano music, also called Tex-Mex. Like the Tejano people, Tejano or Tex-Mex music has a character all its own, and it is sung in Spanish, which was a problem for the Quintanilla children who were born and raised in the US. They understood the language, but didn't speak it well. If the band was to succeed, Selena had to learn to at least sing in Spanish. I can't, Poppy, she complained. I don't know what all the words mean. Abraham wrote down how the words sounded, and Selena memorized them. Soon she was singing in Spanish with lots of feeling and no American accent. The audience was convinced she knew what she was saying. No place for a girl. As a girl lead singer, Selena faced another obstacle. In the Tejano tradition, performers had always been male. Some places refused to book the band. People told my father we would never make it, Selena said. I wanted to prove them wrong. Selena's brother, A.B., had learned much about composing and arranging music. He began writing new Tejano songs with a more modern beat. Young fans, especially girls, loved the fun dance steps Selena created. Long Distance School In 1985, Selena y Los Dinos recorded their first album with a small Texas company. Radio stations liked it, and the band got new gigs. But this created another problem. Selena was only 14 years old. Traveling meant that she had often missed school. The family couldn't afford to pass up any bookings, so Selena had to leave school in eighth grade. Right away, she enrolled in long distance classes, studying while on the road. Everyone pitched in to help with lessons. Television success. In 1985, Selena y Los Dinos was also invited to be on a friend's television show. The band's lively new Tejano rhythm and flashy outfits were a success. It brought bookings at more important events. Still, much of the money went to pay for equipment and travel. Whatever was left was divided equally. If we got five or ten dollars, Selena said, we could go to a Whataburger. Off stage. In her spare time, Selena decorated her costumes with pearls, rhinestones, and lace. Some of the outfits showed off her figure. At first, her dad was not happy. The music of Selena y Los Dinos celebrated family values. Abraham didn't approve of drinking, drugs, or bad language. He didn't want his daughter giving the wrong impression. People like to see fancy costumes in the shows, Poppy. Selena assured him. They know who I really am inside. Off stage, Selena led a quiet life. After performing, she stayed in the band's new bus, nicknamed Big Bertha, sewing, studying, or working on songs. She wasn't a typical teen. There were no school dances or football games. She never went out on dates. 
her life was all about making music. I never had the opportunity to associate with anybody my own age, she said. Her friends were her family, band members, and people involved with their performances. A Rising Star's Chance to Shine Selena's first big recognition came in 1986. The band was nominated for a Tejano Music Award, an important prize. Although they didn't win, Selena, age 15, won Female Vocalist of the Year. She went on to win this and many other awards year after year. The Tejano Girl lead singer had proven everyone wrong. Her star was on the rise. Always believe that the impossible is possible became one of her favorite sayings. In 1988, Coca-Cola wanted to make a commercial featuring Latinos. An executive invited several famous performers to record, but after Selena's audition, it was decided she would do it alone. The ad, recorded in English and Spanish versions, showed Selena's talent to TV audiences across America. At 17, Selena was a lovely young woman proud of her Hispanic heritage and her appearance. She wanted other Latina girls to feel good about their looks too. Her personality also impressed those she worked with. She was wonderful to everybody. She remembered their names and went out and hugged them, an executive said. Soon after, Selena y Los Dinos were offered a big recording contract. The band turned out a string of hit songs Crowds flocked to their concerts, thrilled with the new techno sounds and flashing lights. But the main attraction was always Selena's huge personality. Fans called her the queen of Tex-Mex. Selena never disappointed. Be at your best at all times was her motto. Chris Perez. In 1989, a young musician named Chris Perez joined Los Dinos. He and Selena fell in love. Abraham thought Selena was too young for a serious boyfriend, but for the first time in her life, Selena opposed her father's wishes. She married Chris in 1992. As time passed, Abraham realized Selena had chosen well and welcomed Chris into the family. Fans Across the Border Tejano music hadn't been very popular in Mexico before Selena, but as her fame grew, fans there flocked to the band's sold-out concerts. Mexican newspapers, radio stations, and TV shows wanted to interview her. Selena had worked hard on her Spanish. It was good enough for singing, but was it good enough for interviews? In 1992, Selena arrived in Mexico to face 35 reporters all eager to ask questions. She flashed the group a dazzling smile. She hugged each of the writers. When she made a mistake, she giggled. Please excuse my Spanish, she said. She was trying hard to learn the language of her songs, the language of her ancestors. The reporters appreciated Selena's honesty and effort. They found her to be a refreshing change from other stars. Selena was clearly one of their own, brown and proud. An artist of the people, one newspaper wrote. Selena was truly an international celebrity. Giving back. Selena never forgot her early struggles and those of her family. She began to reach out to the community, especially children, visiting schools to speak out against drugs and to praise the value of education. She gave money from her concerts to many charity organizations. Selena wanted to help young people achieve their dreams. She also focused on some dreams of her own. More successes. Selena loved designing clothes. Why not open a shop to sell her creations? In 1994, the first Selena Etc. store opened in Corpus Christi, followed by another in San Antonio, Texas. Both were very successful. In fact, 1994 was a year filled with successes. The song Bitty Bitty Bomb Bomb, which Selena helped write, became wildly popular. The catchy tune was constantly played on the radio. 
Then, in March, her album Live was named Best Mexican American Album at the 1994 Grammy Awards. It was the first time that a Tejano woman ever achieved such a huge honor. Of course, Selena was very excited, but she was also excited to be among many big name stars. Like any other fan, she went around snapping photos of the night's big winners, including Whitney Houston and Gloria Estefan. Singing in English. Selena had loved American pop songs as far back as her little girl days of singing Blue Moon in the living room. But for years, producers would not offer Selena y los Dinos contracts. They thought audiences might not listen to a Latino group performing American music. It was different now. Selena already had thousands of Spanish-speaking fans. The Grammy Awards got the attention of the rest of America. Wanting to be an entertainer for all audiences, Selena began work on a crossover album. It was a bittersweet decision. Selena was now going to be a solo singer. A.B., Chris, and the other band members would help create and produce the music. But from then on, it wouldn't be Selena y los Dinos anymore. By early 1995, Selena had recorded several songs in English. When the album Dreaming of You was released in July 1995, it sold 175,000 copies in a single day. A record for a female singer. Eventually, millions of copies were sold around the world. Selena's Gift People who met Selena Quintanilla described her as sincere, humble, and gracious. She stood in a class by herself, one person said, a reminder to all Tejanos, all Mexican Americans, all Latinos, that theirs is a beautiful culture with a beautiful language. Selena was a trailblazer. Her brilliant success opened doors for other Latino entertainers. She proved that talent and hard work could overcome obstacles and knock down barriers. She set an example for many young artists to follow. Selena's life has served as an inspiration for Latina girls. She was a symbol of the power of family, determination, and pride in one's heritage. Her life is a reminder that all girls with big dreams can strive to reach their goals no matter who they are or what those goals may be. The queen of Tex-Mex lived her ideal of being at her best at all times and proved that the impossible is indeed possible.